First at four, this judge hands abortion rights supporters a big victory in Michigan, but the fight isn't over. We are waiting to see if there is an appeal, and Right to Life says it's ready for the next battle. Kim Adams steps out of the studio. Kim. Well, I am live at the Armada Fair. It's hot, it's humid, but it's a lot of fun. I've got your forecast for the weekend coming up. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, a woman's ability to get an abortion in Michigan remains protected by a restraining order as legal battles continue and voters might get their say at the ballot box in November. Today, an Oakland County judge made it clear he has grave concerns about enforcing a 1931 abortion ban in the state. As currently applied, the court finds the state uh, the statute dangerous and chilling to our state's population of childbearing people and the medical professionals who care for them. Judge Jacob Cunningham spent about 30 minutes explaining why he's leaving a restraining order in place preventing county prosecutors from enforcing that 90-year-old law. The reasons include his belief doctors and women could be harmed if the injunction were lifted, while prosecutors looking to enforce the ban will not be harmed at all. The court suggests the county prosecutors focus their attention and resources in the meantime to investigation and prosecution of criminal sexual conduct, homicide, arson, child and elder abuse, animal cruelty, and other violent horrific crimes that we see in our society. Like a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, our state is only as strong as its most vulnerable and at-risk populations. Criminalization of our medical professionals for treating the women seeking appropriate, safe, constitutionally protected medical care is an irreparable danger to our society at large. Now, if the restraining order had been lifted, it could have created a patchwork of confusion in the state of Michigan, with some prosecutors promising to enforce the law, while others have said they would refuse to do so. Our Grant Herms was in court today, has been gathering reaction over the past few hours. Grant. Well, Karen, a lot of emotions today just after that ruling. But first, let's get you to what this all means here. First, it means that prosecutors will not be allowed to go after abortion providers across the state, meaning abortion stays legal in every county. The judge today saying the state and Governor Whitmer's team, along with the prosecutors who joined her, met the four complicated standards to get this injunction in place, including the judge finding the harm potentially done to, in his words, everyone in the state. Now, this does fall in line with a court of appeals ruling that barred the state attorney general's office from prosecuting abortion providers. What this does not do is strike down the state's 1931 law that criminalizes abortion. That stays on the books until there's an official ruling from the state Supreme Court or if the ballot initiative gets on the ballot to enshrine the right to abortion into Michigan's Constitution. Take a listen to what both sides had to say today, though, after the ruling. You carry a lot of weight when you when you talk about things like this because you know how significant it is for so many women, uh, so many people in the state, and so we are uh, relieved and grateful. This hearing should never have happened. This is judicial malfeasance because the governor does not have the legal right to bring a lawsuit to challenge a duly enacted law. Now, this ruling can be appealed. The lawyer for those defendants on the other side of the state saying they plan to appeal. Karen, they have 21 days to get that in. Back to you. Now, Grant, this ruling will also have a national effect as well. What do we know about the impact this will have on the fight over abortion across the country? Well, Karen, for starters, this was the first case to have live witnesses in an open court. So it was closely watched to see what would or wouldn't work in front of a judge when it came to taking on a state's abortion ban. It is also going to keep Michigan one of those so-called safe haven states for those seeking abortion or reproductive care. There was a lot of worry from abortion providers that this would create that patchwork, as you said, at the very top of this story here, or put in place a ban in itself that would mean that there'd be a ban in the upper Midwest from about Pennsylvania to Illinois. So Michigan still legal here in, to get an abortion in the state of Michigan after this ruling, at least for the time being. Back to you. All right, we appreciate it, Grant. And as Grant did mention, Governor Whitmer has already appealed directly to the state Supreme Court to have the 1931 law declared unconstitutional. That case is pending. The ballot initiative he mentioned is also pending. Signatures have been turned in. The Board of Canvassers is expected to meet August 31st to discuss whether that proposal makes it onto the November ballot. We'll be following all of this for you.
A jury will start deliberations next week in the trial of two men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer. It is the second trial for Adam Fox and Barry Croft Jr. after a previous jury could not reach verdicts. They faced conspiracy charges, but their defense tried to make the case today. The two men were entrapped. Now it is up to the jury, which gets to work Monday morning. The Woodward Dream Cruise about to take over one of the most famous avenues in the country. Sky 4 is over Woodward right now, and the event is billed as the world's biggest cruise where cars of all makes and models strut their stuff. Organizers say it draws about 40,000 classic cars and 1.5 million visitors each year. We are already seeing a lot of cars rolling down Woodward. The official cruise runs from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. tomorrow from Ferndale to Pontiac. Obviously a gorgeous day in that stretch of Metro Detroit. Dream Cruise, just one of the weekend events we're following. Our forewarned weather crew is on the road this afternoon. Meteorologist Kim Adams bringing you the forecast from the Armada Fair. And I understand Kim, you'll also highlight some of the events people can enjoy. It is, it is hot, it's humid out here, but it is so much fun. We've got rides, games, this is the 150th anniversary of the Armada Fair, but you know me, I want the food. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, but first let's talk about your forecast because we do have some storms coming into play over the weekend. As I said, it is hot, it's humid. Temperatures right now are for the most part in the low to mid 80s, but you factor in the humidity, feels a little warmer than that. 86 right now at City Airport and at Metro, 80 in Pontiac, 83 in Mount Clemens. Well, we've had a couple of days of those pop-up showers and thunderstorms, but now it's nice and clear. We've got partly cloudy skies. It will stay dry tonight if you are headed out to the Dream Cruise. It is going to be a nice night. You can keep that convertible top down. The wax, all that effort you put into waxing the car will be fine until about 3 or 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and that is when we bring in the chance for showers and thunderstorms. Some of those storms could be strong, possibly even severe. I'm gonna talk about that coming up a little bit later on in the forecast. But right now, I wanna take you over here. Kyle is grilling up something special for me. Kyle, what are you guys grilling for me? Got a PB&J with grape and a PB&J with strawberry to try. Oh, so I think I'm gonna recruit some of these kids over here. You guys wanna try some peanut butter and jelly that's grilled? Have you ever had grilled peanut butter and jelly? I don't think so. You don't think so? What about you? Ever had a grilled PB&G? No, I'm, I'm allergic to peanut butter. Okay, then you can't have it. You cannot have it, but you, you are too? All right, we're going to find you some funnel cakes. All right, we're going to have your forecast here coming up in a few minutes. All right, we're looking forward to it. Thank you, Kim. By the way, when you stop at a park, you obviously expect to see people walking, jogging, kids riding their bikes, and everybody kind of relaxing. You probably don't expect to see or maybe hear opera. But if you happen to be heading toward Palmer Park tonight, you might want to bring a blanket, maybe a lawn chair for a special show. Paula Tutman has a preview. So if you're not into cruising, or even if you are into cruising, but you just want to kind of get off of Woodward, off the drag, and chill a little bit, just take Merrill Plaisance into Palmer Park, follow it all the way to the Splash Park, or just follow the sounds of beautiful music. A moment, please, to enjoy the beautiful voices of Detroit Opera's touring ensemble. This afternoon, members of the touring ensemble prepared for this evening's Opera in the Park performance in Palmer Park in Detroit. Listen carefully and you get a sense of the true excitement. You may feel like you've heard this music before, even tonight. If it's your first time, you'll be experiencing it with two very important characters the libretto rarely adds. The sounds of the city and nature are what make these outdoor performances even more fun. Birds chirping or, you know, kids playing outside or a car just going by. You kind of block out a little bit when you get in the zone. So I, I kind of didn't hear the alarm. I didn't even notice the airplane, but uh, the butterfly kind of saw out the corner of my eye. But once I'm in that zone, everything is just, I want you to come into this new world with me that I'm trying to take you on the journey. In. But attendees will also be introduced to a new character to Michigan Opera's stage. It's the debut performance of Kathy Mayer, who despite being sight impaired, shows the depth of diversity this opera company is committed to. I use a lot of muscle memory, so I know where to place the sound. 
and not to push when you're outside, not to overthink. The performers truly represent the community. The community outside the walls or doors uh, of Detroit Opera are reflected on the stage. Amelia, she is about to die. Her husband is out to kill her because he believes she has been unfaithful. But Valentin is a soldier. He's about to go off to war, and he's in a bar with a bunch of his buddies, the soldiers, and he just all breaks out with this, this, this prayer. So again, the event starts at 7 o'clock. It's only about an hour, but it will be time well spent. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Opera at Palmer Park is free, by the way. Everyone is invited. This is also a great opportunity to get a taste of the new theater season that opens in September.